deliverance. Come on, the Lord has been good. The Lord has been good. Come on, praise him for your deliverance. Praise him for your healing. Praise him for the fact that you are saved. Come on, if you're saved and you're glad about it, come on, give him a wonderful praise. Give him a wonderful praise. Give him a wonderful praise. Hallelujah. Come on, that's it. Give him a wonderful praise. Oh, yes, the Lord is good. The Lord is good. The Lord is kind. The Lord is merciful. Hallelujah. That's it. Praise him for his goodness. Praise him for his kindness. Come on. Can you think about something that he has done for you? He woke us up. Hallelujah. How many of you remember when you were bound in your sin? But he delivered. Woo. How many of you remember when you were sick in your body? But somebody said he healed. We declare that he's a healer. He's a deliverer. How many of you have ever had a challenge in your mind? But you can say today that he's a mind regulator. He's a mind regulator. Come on, Xanax can't do what Jesus can. Woo! Hallelujah. He's a mind regulator. He's a healer. He's a deliverer. And today, Father, we thank you. We thank you. Clap your hands one more time and bless the Lord. Oh, you people. Bless the Lord, oh, you people. We give him praise. You can have your seats in the presence of the Lord. We again welcome you to Impact Church, Goldsboro, where we call this place the wealthy place. Glory to God. We call it the wealthy place. Why do we call it the wealthy place? Because it's where God is. It's where God dwells. It's where God who is, amen, our rich inheritance. He is our inheritance. And he is not only in us, but he basically dwells among us when we come together in corporate worship. And I believe that God is doing some amazing things. And so I am excited about all the things that he is doing and the things that he's doing in your life. All right, this morning we are truly grateful again. We praise God. Thank God for, again, uh, just an amazing, amazing, I, I just feel the presence of God. I'm like Apostle Corey. The presence of the Lord is here, and I'm truly thankful, and uh, the spirit of worship is here. The spirit of praise is here. I want you to prepare yourselves. We're getting ready to go into the word of the Lord. We're going to start a new uh, teaching today, and I believe that God is getting ready to do some amazing things in the body of Christ, and I believe he's doing some amazing things in the people of God. And I believe he's getting ready to do some amazing things even in his church, in his house. And so we're truly honored today. We give honor to all of our leaders in their respectable places. And many of them are, are, are not present or some of them are not present, shall I say. Certainly praise God for Pastor Robert, who is in his absence. Uh, he has basically taken an assignment. And he's blessing somebody's house this morning. I thank God for him. And we speak blessings, amen, to him. And send them with him as he preaches and teaches the word of the Lord and so grateful to see that door opening for him amen as he goes for truly amazing gift the man of God is to the body of Christ and we always honor our apostle apostle Catherine in her absence we appreciate her at all times and we honor you we thank God for you and your respectable places again thank God for apostle Corey opening us up this morning with such a powerful powerful uh prophetic if you will uh, prayer as well as worship. I loved what he basically shared in the content that, or the context that literally praise and worship is not just a little space of time where we just basically try to just give the preacher time before he gets up. It is truly a time to worship and to praise God. And we started something here some time ago as we have been making adjustments in even in the area of our music and sing team. We said we are doing praise and worship with the prophets and so we actually, you know, as the prophetic gifts are up, uh, opening up the service and however they lead and whatever vein that they uh, basically uh, tap into, we just sort of follow. And uh, I will say, Apostle, you you getting that singing. You Oh, I hear the singer coming out. Yeah. Did y'all hear that? I was like, all right, man, this brother here. Hey, man, he said, y'all going to quit, quit clowning on me like I ain't got no singing. 
Yeah, he truly a, a anointed vessel, but I thank God for you, and he tapped into something that is very powerful. So we're going to move right into it. Today, I want to call your attention to, uh, in the scripture, we want to lay uh, a couple of foundational scriptures that we want to lay today, and we're going to talk about building material. We're going to teach from the context or the text, or shall I say the subject, building material, and we'll give you better context to this as we move forward. Because everybody is building, the question could be asked, what are we building? And what is, what is God calling and what is he commanding and what is he commissioning us to build? But it is important that we understand this. There are two models, if you will, in the, in the aspect of um, uh, understanding ministry and, and, and the ecclesiastic, ecclesiastical uh, aspect of ministry. There are two models that lo a lot of times we are operating and functioning out of in the in the in the ministry. We're either in the blessing model or we're in the building model. And we're in a day and time where even in the blessing model, what we find there is the blessing model is where and when we basically uh, come to church and it's the mindset of the people to be blessed as well as the intent of God to bless his people. We got to understand that it's God's intent to bless us. It's God's intent to bless and to prosper us. And but many times we get stuck in the blessing model and we receive blessings and we get uh, fat and full off of the blessings of God. Uh, and literally, literally, we begin to become more addicted to uh, the blessing model to where that's our mindset. Uh, uh, Prophet Jay, uh, that's our mindset. We get up and say, I'm going to get me a blessing. But we sometimes uh, uh, and, and many times fail to understand that God wants to, d to bless you, but he also wants to use you to help do something that is profoundly, if you will, uh, more, if you will, powerful, bigger. And I'm not going to necessarily say better because he wants you blessed, but he wants you to understand there are things that he's doing beyond just you. And so your blessing is not just for you. Your blessing is not for you just to be happy. There are people who in the body of Christ, they really serve God and they serve God in an idolatrous way and in a selfish way to where it's literally a thing where people serve God to position themselves for God to fix their lives. It's like, make my life better, God. Make my life better. They, they treat, and we treat God the way people treat. Uh, what is the lady who used to, you know, fix people's life? Alania. Alania fixed my life. And they would go and sit with her, and she would, uh, in her psychological and her therapeutic way, uh, in, her, in her show, and it was a lot of entertainment, too, but she was, and she really is uh, uh, one who is trained in psychology and so forth and as a therapist, and she would help them out. And it's like either, you know, they get worse or they get better, but their intent was, I'm going to sit with Alania so she can fix my life. That's really a lot of people who, who, who come to church and who are saved. They, they are basically positioning themselves and they posture themselves to get but never to become. I'm teaching good. The blessing model. We get caught up in the blessing. And, and, and in prophet uh, uh, Apostle Corey this morning even referenced the fact that we have people. And, and this, listen, uh, conferences are very necessary when they are of God. And I've, I've learned that I, I, I'm, I'm learning that. Uh, and I think it probably uh, the older we get, the more uh, we, we hear God a whole lot different. Hello. <laughs> Woo. Shiman, so my movement is definitely a Holy Ghost movement. I, I just can't listen. I ain't got the energy just to be moving. Even when I was serving and and, and I would go to fire conference and apostle and them, we doing conferences and uh, you know and serving even in the capacity that I served it was a lot of work. And I used to tell them, you know, they, you know, they were conferences, and you know, in conferences, you, you know, especially the conferences that I'm used to, uh, Apostle would have uh, setting after setting, and 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 what they call soaking service started at 6 a.m. So you up at 6 a.m. and you sitting in the presence of God, and we're praying and soaking, and then by 6 to 8, you know, you get ready to go into your first session, and somebody teaching, and then from 8 to uh, about 9:30, somebody teaching, then at 10, somebody's coming back to teach. 
teach. And then after 10, 10 to about 1130, they give you a 30 minute lunch break and then come back at one and somebody going to teach again. And, and, you know, and I used to tell him, I said, man, look, you, you brothers are still in your 30s and stuff. <laughs> I got to go take a nap. <laughs> God knows me <laughs> and he know I can't hear him feeling like this. I'm, I'm in that conference. I, I don't hear nothing, don't feel nothing. All I feel is, a man, I need to get up out of here. I'm dizzy. The preacher look like there's two of them. I'm seeing three people. And whew, how many of you know when you don't have your rest and your focus, you know, you're all over the place. And I say that to say that we're all in different places, different stages of life. We're in different, if you will, mindsets. And we have to learn to hear God, and we have to learn to follow the Holy Spirit as he's led. And there are a lot of things that I believe that are yet being done that is flesh-driven. Uh, there's a lot of stuff that's just flesh-driven. Now, I believe that God is speaking, God is moving, but it is imperative that we tap into what the Holy Ghost is doing and be led of the Spirit. For they that are led of the Spirit, they are the sons of God, and these are the things and those are the things that are blessed you. Now, it doesn't imply that we go around judging whether or not people are hearing the Holy Ghost. you got to hear the Spirit of the Lord for yourself, really, and you have to be in a place where you hear the Holy Ghost. You know, I get sometimes, sometimes I get criticized. I think they know me now. I have people People who say to me, uh, you know, they were going to invite you, but so-and-so said he ain't coming out. I was like, well, since you know, then ain't no need to talking about that. Cause, you know, I don't come because you ask. I go because I am led. Oh, y'all ain't saying nothing. And this is why I believe many people basically can't be effective where they need to be effective is because they are basically moving because they're asked. And then they have no more energy for what they should have energy for. Come on here. Ain't no need of you going, doing everything, and then you get home, can't talk to your family. Come on here. Uh, uh, television, raising your children. Come on here. You, 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 come on, you got your aunt, baby, sitting while you going everywhere, doing everything in the name of the Lord. Hello, somebody. Hello, somebody. Hello, somebody. Husband don't know you. Wife don't know you. Come on here. But yet you're blessing the people of God. And see, what we have to understand is there is an order to God. And there's a thing that God says, even in the word of the Lord, that he says, I only really, and, and the scripture says, how can we literally not only lead, but I believe serve even in the house of God effectively. And, and, and we do not take in consideration our own house. In other words, if you don't manage your own house, that is not just talking about managing your money and managing. The, it's managing your entire life and your entire life's responsibility. Come on, somebody. You have a responsibility. Now, I'm just saying this in the context that, you know, when we get in this place where we're after the blessing and, the, and we're in this blessing model, we forget the building model. And the building model has order and structure and has blueprints that God says that literally, I am literally pouring oil out according to my pattern, according to my principle, and according to my way. A lot of things that we do, a lot of things that we do is, is flesh driven and understand that in the garden there was uh, two things on that tree, the tree of knowledge, the tree of knowledge, but it was the knowledge of good and evil and everything good is not gone. And one of the reasons why many people get caught up in witchcraft and, and get caught up into this thing where they're controlled and people basically get, I call it religious control in the context that sometimes even we ourselves, because we have this orphan spirit that may be operating in a person's life, that literally they feel like God loves them because they do a lot of stuff. <laughs> Come on, Mary and Martha was busy. Well, well, Martha was busy. She was all over the place. Mary said, I'm finna sit down. <laughs> I'm finna sit down. And Martha got upset with Mary because she's like, what's she doing? She's just sitting there doing nothing. And it's not sitting doing nothing. It was where she was sitting. It was what she was doing that was important. It wasn't the fact that she was idle, but she was idle in the right place at the right time with the right one. Come on here. Because some folk really ain't doing nothing. Hello, somebody. They really ain't doing nothing. That ain't what God is saying for you to sit down and do nothing. Come on here. And God is getting ready to shift some of you because some of you, you're doing something, but you ain't doing the right thing. 
You're giving your oil to the wrong place, to the wrong people. Come on, somebody. And a lot of people are doing what they do because they are trying to gain the approval of heaven when literally God basically is not measuring you by how much you do. He's measuring and he's looking at you based on who you are. And yes, your obedience it is something that brings and produces the favor of God on your life as well as your ministry. You do not have to work your way into God's love. He just loves you. He loves you already. You ain't got to be busy. Come on here. And some of us are busy, but we're not God busy. Yeah, we busy, busy, busy. And then wonder why we tired. Wonder why we can't focus. And then the people that we're busy with and the people that we're blessing, come on here. They done got your stuff, got blessed by you. They ain't listen. Hello. You ain't no more, no better off. Come on, you did. Hello, somebody. You own a budget and you take what little budget money you do have and you go and bless folk that ain't even supposed to have. It. And then you come to the house of God with no tithe, no offering. Hello, somebody. After you done blessed everybody with your time and your energy and then come to the house house of God and come to the place where even where you're assigned and where you are, are basically called to and you have nothing left. That's the same in your own house, nothing left. My wife used to preach a message that I'm not going to give everybody else the best of me and give my husband and my family the rest of me. Come on, somebody. And, and so she used to always practice that, listen, before I go and bless God's people, I want to make sure that I am a blessing to the house and to the, to the, to the husband that God has given to me. Yeah, he gave her a good husband. I didn't need no amen on that one. God gave my wife a good man. Shucks. But it, it's something for us to think about. Blessing model. The building model is about order. It's about order. But what God is doing is he's bringing us back to a place where he's basically saying, now I want to focus. I want to share this with you because I think it's important for us to understand, uh, that even as, as it relates to what we're getting ready to teach now, building material, building material. Are you building material? God is building something that is bigger and greater and even uh, it's beyond ourselves. Now, don't let that offend you. Don't let that offend you. But if it does, it's just your flesh. I get offended quite a bit reading the Bible. How many of you get, get in your scripture or get in the word and you start reading the scripture and you yourself get get offended by what you're reading because you should always read the Bible to see yourself. You shouldn't read the Bible to hear what everybody else need to hear and see what everybody else need to see. You should read the Bible to, to develop a relationship with God. This is another challenge that we find in the body of Christ as well. We have a lot of people who are basically ministering outside of a relationship. Oh my God. And see, when you read when you read and study in your Bible, a lot of times you have to remind yourself you got to minister. Why? Because you are in pursuit of God for yourself and you're trying to even deal with, you know, hello, can I tell you people who stand up here, it don't, we don't stand up here because we were just so right oh jesus it's like god listen you call some of the most broken people i have ever seen jesus why did you call me lord you know i still got clay feet and it's hot out here and and glory to god when you got clay feet and you're walking in the midst of heat you're subject to melt but aren't you glad you serve a God who's not judging you basically the way man judge you? Come on, somebody. I have never seen such a generation that is so critical of people as it relates to them being saved. Listen, just because you're saved don't mean you don't need to be delivered. Just because you're saved and that you have a calling don't mean that you don't need help. And so if I need help every now and then, I need you to practice mercy because you might find me sometimes in a place where I'm not always what I should be. Well, come on, look at your neighbor with they save self and say sometimes I just need a little mercy shucks I know you were born in a manger but all of us weren't born in a manger come on here all of us weren't born in a manger all of us was not born the way you was born some of us was really born in sin shaped in iniquity and still around iniquitous people and iniquitous hello I don't know about y'all but I need help I don't preach to y'all because I got it together. I preach because I've been called to. And see, when you call to preach, you preach not because you want to. I preach, Paul said, woe is me if I don't do it. It ain't that I really even want to do it. I love doing it. I ain't got no problem doing it. But I don't have to do it to have an identity. 
I can have an identity. When I put the mic down, I know who I am in him. I don't preach because I need to be a star or I need to be known. We got to learn to develop a relationship with God even before we get into deep ministry. And what we have today is we have people in ministry without relationship. And what happens then is, yes, you can still work and do uh, your gift. For the Bible says in Scripture that they approached Jesus and said, listen, uh, we cast out devils in your name. We did many good works in your name. They held revivals in his name. They, 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 they laid hands and folk got healed in his name. Now, that what's intriguing is Jesus looked at him and said, depart from me. I don't know you people. And then he said, and what you're doing is iniquitous. You're workers of iniquity. How can you be doing the work that looks like God's work and it be iniquitous? Because you're doing it without a relationship. You're doing it and you're not even basically in a relationship with God and somebody activated the gift in you because everything that's activated don't mean it's sanctified. Oh, I'm preaching up in here. See, we got a lot of stuff moving, but it ain't set apart for God. Come on, somebody. A lot of people are basically up under the auspices of, 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 of organizations, of bishops and dioceses and all of that ecclesiastical stuff that's not bad in its own way, but when the Holy Ghost is not the unction of the function you, listen it ain't no good I don't care how good it looks I don't care how many people get healed in the revival I don't care how many people basically fall out and get up talking about God touched me listen it was a God but it may not have been Yahweh because I believe that there are some people who are working ministry and doing ministry but demons are helping them out y'all ain't got to say nothing uh, demons can help and assist you to do stuff and yes even in the scripture you find that there there are those who could work miracles, but they were not the miracles of God. Because if it doesn't reveal God, and if it doesn't bring people to the cross of Calvary, if it doesn't bring people into the saving knowledge of Jesus, if people are not hungry for the Lord, and if they just get hungry for more miracles, they just fish and loaf members. Come on here. They just folk who just after fish and loaves, but they're not after him. Because it's as soon as you require something beyond, oh, I'm preaching now. As soon as you require a, a commitment as soon as you require something that is of a sacrifice uh, them same folk so don't get excited because you see folk doing miracles and don't get excited because you see folk falling out because folk you don't know what's knocking them out come on somebody and I'm telling you I have seen some people working in ministry and doing ministry and folk declares God and the Holy Ghost will give you discernment and say them demons that's working with them folk y'all ain't got to say man I grew up in deliverance I know what deliverance is oh my very first service was a deli I got saved and God stuck me in a deliverance service right when I got saved and gave me the ministry ministry of deliverance seen demons no demons hello have seen demons i'm talking about be so strong that 12 year old girl it took about 12 men to even physically try hello seen folk talk out of their voice and so literally you got to understand satan can come as an angel and you got folks sitting up under demonic stuff and don't even know it. Now, I'm not, I'm not implying that's everything, but that's why you got to have discernment. I'm, I'm saying you got to have discernment. And I'm saying everything that's moving ain't God. And you got to be the type of believer that, listen, you, you got to have enough respect and value in yourself. Hello. Listen, hello. You, you got to have folk in a place where they look at you like, they, I might need to ask, can I touch you? Now just don't grab my head, honey. Come on, somebody, because I might do that right there. Hold up. <laughs> you, you ain't just finna touch me. Come on. I'm not one of them little gullible, goofy, come on here, groupy church folk who run around looking for a touch. Come on here. I have a spiritual father. I have a home. I'm not some homeless believer who just running around needing somebody to touch and affirm me. I got somebody covering me. I got somebody watching over my soul. Come on. You know how it is when you have a father and you have a father. Hello. And, and, and I grew up with my that my dad, I had, my daddy was my protector. I, listen, I, I, I stepped down the house different. 
Because I knew if you messed with me, Willie C was coming. Come on here. When you got a covering, when you got somebody watching over you, yes, you have a God. You have a God. You have a Father in God. But he's also placed you in the care of people who will care for you. And a lot of people are running around, and I call them homeless believers. They are like sheep without a shepherd. They're scattered, running all over the place. And it's amazing if you study why God called us sheep is because we act just like sheep. Sheep is one of the most ignorant animals and creatures. And he was not insulting us, but he made us so he know us. You ain't got to say, man, he did. He made you. He know as intelligent as you may think you are, you just as dumb as a box of rocks if you don't be led by the Spirit of God. Y'all ain't got to say, man, you can have a degree in whatever thing you want, theology. Uh, you can have a degree in all the uh, uh, knowledge of the world. If you don't have the Holy Ghost, if the Spirit ain't leading you, you are being led down a path that's subject to hell. Come on, we need the Holy Ghost. Somebody say, I need the Holy Ghost. And the Holy Ghost is not an entertainer. Come on, somebody. And the Holy Ghost will have you in a place where you will not be entertained. Hello. You got to have a level of, of, of regard for your own self. That don't let people play with you. Come on, somebody. You ain't finna play with me. I don't care how, how you quicken and how, hello. You ain't finna just three people and five people me. Uh-uh. You need, listen, uh-uh. I'm not here for the minister to me in the spirit. And literally don't let everybody touch you and laying hands on you. Lay hands suddenly on no man. I used to tell my children don't, don't care where you go. Don't eat at everybody's house. I don't care if your belly growling. I don't care if you hungry. Wait till you get home because you don't know what you eating. Come on here. You be done ate something and start talking like a Yeah, God is bringing some order. And don't be, let people fool you because they're busy and, and because, because they work in miracles. Even back in Moses' day, hey, you know, when Moses went back and he threw his rod down, they threw theirs down too. What? Everything Moses did, they did. They had sorcerers and they had, you know, Egyptian magic. What? 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 But only God could take them out the way he did. God said, that's all right. They're, they're, they're magicians. Can, they can keep up with that rod you're putting on it, but they can't keep up with your God. Huh? Come on, somebody. They might be able to turn their rod into a snake, too, but they can't keep up with your God. Because when I strike them with this last, they, listen, when I, when I put their firstborn child to death, they ain't going to be able to get them up. Y'all ain't going to say nothing because I'm the God of life. When I tell you to put the blood on the doorpost and I send the death angel, they ain't going to be able to keep him out. Why? Because I'm God. I'm Yahweh. And they might be able to mimic your power in the earth but they can't mimic your God in the heavens Woo. And I don't care how, 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 how you, you can work and do this and you ain't got no love in your heart talk to me here and you do all this great preaching and then get finished preaching and y'all go sit down and eat and talk about people come on here talk about the folk you minister to talk about how gullible did you see that one Lord Hello. You ain't got no Holy Ghost if you can minister to people and then even think of them the way some folk think. Of. Listen, when you got the Holy Ghost, even when I get mad with y'all, the Holy Ghost correct me. So uh uh, you ain't going to, mm -mm. I mean, I'm mad at the church. I'm mad at the members. Come on, y'all, can't we tell the truth? Because sometimes the pastor get just like y'all get mad at me. Come on here. Sometimes y'all get mad at me. I get, that's just, that's just this relationship. You're getting mad and you're just like, hey, I ain't studying, man. The Holy Ghost said, you going to pray for him. I'm like, I ain't going to pray for me. You going to pray for him. You ever argue with God? I ain't praying either. You're going to pray for him. <laughs> well, you ain't going to have no rest. Whew. Moses was a true man of God. The Bible said he was the meekest man in the earth. The Bible basically talks and tells us how even they was a little suspect of Moses. And even when they talked about him at time and they did this, that, and the other. And literally when it was time for God to really, God got upset with the children of Israel. And God says, listen, Moses, I'm going to give you a whole new people. Get out of the way. I'm going to kill them. Moses jumped right in front of God and said, don't do it. You know you got a good shepherd when he intercedes for you after you done talked about him. Come on here. After, oh, I'm preaching good up in here. A good 
good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. Now, what am I saying? I'm saying you must understand that what God is doing, you got to have a level of recognition and discernment and become disciplined so that you care more about your, your own spiritual well-being and understand the order of God will keep you in a place where you are developing properly and you are growing properly. This is why parents need to be conscious and aware even of their own children. You got to be the type of parent who's not just going to work and basically because your child don't look like he's or he or she is hurt, you got to know how to develop children. Come on here. We got folk who just having babies but have no idea how to develop a human being. Y'all ain't saying nothing. No idea how and the power of your, if your own actions and your own life, how it is impacting. You ain't just sitting around teaching, uh, saying this, that, and the other. Your children are learning from your example. Come on here. You cannot do what you want to do in front of your children and think that they're not learning. They are like sponges. And what we got to learn to do is we got to learn how to develop. For the Bible says children are inheritance of the Lord. It's the heritage of God, meaning they're God's property. You may have had that child, but it belongs and he or she belongs to God. And those of us who are believers, we should be raising up children of God. We should literally, our children have to make a decision and choose God. But you ought to live so for God that your child say, I want to serve the God of my daddy. I want to serve the God of my mother. They might go and practice this, that, and the other, but you ought to know that if you raise them up right, the Bible says train them in the way that they should go, and even if they go another direction, what you put in them ain't going to leave them. Come on here. They can be in the wrong place, but they can still hear the right thing. Why? Because mama put in them what they need. Come on here. Ain't got no business being where they are, but they still hear mama saying, you need to get out of here. You don't need to be here. You know this ain't the will of God. And some of our children will, listen, some of our children are learning the hard way. They're understanding that they have a, a, a will and a free will and they can do what they want. And so they just doing what they want. But what they cannot do is they can't erase what you put in them. Come on here. They can't escape. And that's why they can't even get comfortable trying to be what some of these other folk are doing. No, your mama didn't raise you like that. You just can't be like that other hoochie mama. Come on here. Because you were raised to be a lady. Come on here. You just can't be another Mac daddy where you have all kinds of women. No, because you was raised in a gentleman's house. And even, even as you may be young and it may be popular to go and do what these folk are doing, you can't do it. And some of these folk today are learning that they grew up in a Holy Ghost house and they just can't live any kind of way. Oh, y'all ain't saying nothing. But that's what we do. We raise our children in the fear and admonition of the Lord. And even if they depart, the word in them will not depart out of them. And can I tell you, God's going to save them at the right time. Sometimes you got to remind yourself for those of you who are worried about your children remember you ain't always been saved come on here remember the time that you basically did not know what you know now but guess what now you know though come on here you're saved now and God is able to save your child just like he saved you God is able your child might be somewhere doing what they ain't got no business doing but the Holy Ghost can come right on the spot and say this is it this is your time there has been a, a whole life prepared for you and it's time for you to come into your purpose you can't do it out here with him you can't run with hell because your assignment is from heaven y'all ain't saying nothing to me I believe that God right now I prophesy that children are hearing the voice of God I prophesy that some of you who have raised your children in the fear of God hey God is getting ready to speak to them they might be in drug houses but they're coming out today they might be somewhere doing what they ain't got no business doing but the anointing on their life is commanding that they come out in the name of Jesus. Somebody ought to give God praise. Come on, you know if he saved you, he can save your babies. Come on, he, come on, you ain't, no, 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 no. I know you want everybody to think you say, but you ain't been no angel always, honey. Come on, you ain't been no angel always. You've done some things. You've been some places. You, hello, you have done some things you are not proud of, but God delivered you. And if he delivered you, don't you know he got the same power? He can deliver your babies. So you need to go to sleep at night after you pray for them. Say, Lord, keep my children. For the Bible said he is able to keep that which we commit unto his hands. And if you have given him your children, if you've given him your babies, know that God is able. Yeah. 
Some of you who are adults, and you, you listen, some of you trying to run from God, and you're trying to do what you want to do, and you can't even do it. Some folk basically got the spirit of the world on them, and basically the world believes that God just loves us. So if he loves us, we can do what we want. And you're trying to do what you want, but you ain't going to be able to get by with that. Uh-uh, uh-uh, that's too much in you. God has done invested too much in you. There's too much in He done saved you from too much stuff. He done brought you out of too much stuff. Uh, you got too much word in you now. Come on here. You done seen come on here hell no you done seen too much and what hell is trying to do is get you down that path and destroy you but God says no no I'm not going to let you just do what the world do no no I know the world say no no he loves everybody you can fornicate if you just love him and you plan on marrying him go ahead and let him get it hello somebody but no hell 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 I have you believe in that but the anointing on you would say no I got to sanctify this man you don't sanctify the marriage when you get married you sanctify it when you get engaged you say no we can't do no more that no no ah we saved now ain't no more of that no no because if you can't keep yourself before you get married you ain't gonna be able to keep yourself after you get ah right, y'all ain't saying nothing here oh i tell pre uh, folk who are going through premarital counseling if you're having sex stop well we finna get married stop because if you don't stop even though you may be giving it to each other if you don't have the ability to deny yourself of each other you ain't going to be able to deny yourself of that young lady at work brother when that young lady wants you to get it you ain't going to have no strength y'all ain't saying that when that brother wants you to hello when your husband get on your nerves and cannot recognize where you are and then that man at work sees everything about you he see when you're hurting he see how you change your hair he said man your nails look good mm, you smell good today and all of a sudden you ain't felt this way in a while and you don't even feel that way about your own husband but now you got this feeling then you're saying Lord if he just wanted, it he can get hello see but you got to learn how to sanctify yourself because can I tell you temptation ain't going nowhere you might be saved but you still human y'all ain't got to say man just because you're saved don't mean you can do it that's why you need to stop judging for how could they do that the same way you would if you probably went through what they went through and didn't have the Holy Ghost like you do Come on, see, I stay delivered because I know what I'm capable of. And when you know what you're capable of, you stay away from what you know what you're capable of. Y'all ain't saying nothing. Some folk, you say, I ain't got no business messing with that right there because that, mm-mm, uh -uh, the devil is a lie. See, to stay delivered, you got to know yourself. Come on, this ain't no thing where they do like they do when you're a snake handler just to prove that you didn't get all bit up. No, no, no. I know I'm subject to fall. I need the Holy Ghost. That's a whole nother message that we had. Folk need to hear about the Holy Ghost again. Come on. We getting folk blessed and getting them all activated and gifted up and they ain't got no, no sensitivity to the Spirit of God. Come on, we ain't fasting. Come on, somebody. We ain't fasting. Yeah, you're reading. You got a lot of book knowledge. You got a lot of intellectual knowledge, but you have no power within you through the Holy Ghost to help you manage and govern what's growing up in you. Come on, what's growing up in you needs a governor, and his name is the Holy Ghost. Listen, the Holy Spirit is my governor. The Holy Spirit constrains me when I want to go off. Y'all ain't saying nothing here. I'm telling you, you better go ahead and admit the fact just because you're saved, don't mean you ain't got it still in you. Sometimes you feel like cussing everything out that moves. Hello. you. I mean, but the Holy Ghost will look at you and say, don't you do it. Y'all ain't got to say amen. And just because it come to your head, you ain't got to let it come out of your mouth. And listen, stop letting your left hand know what your right hand doing. Social media got some of y'all so gullible. You put everything that's on your mind, what's on your mind, and you tell everybody. The Bible said don't even let your left hand know what your right hand is doing. And folk know everything about you because you give it the devil all of the tools to destroy you and you still hold it just because you had a temptation and a moment of temptation don't mean you sin temptation is not sin just because you feel like cussing don't mean you uh, but now the bible says that even Jesus said listen if you look on a woman and lust after her in your heart you have committed adultery already you got to deal with that stuff Come on, we teaching folk how to prophesy, preach, teach, but we ain't teaching them how to be saved. Come on, somebody. It's just like folk know how to have a wedding and get married, but don't know how to be married. Everybody planning for it, but they ain't, they ain't preparing for it. Oh, y'all ain't saying. It's different planning for a wedding versus preparing yourself to be married. 
All the married folks said, yes, sir. The married folks said, oh, the blessing with an offering. Cash app is Von Newsom, uh, dollar sign Von Newsom. Because you're saying, yes, it's true. Yes, it's true. We planned for a beautiful wedding, but never prepared for all this. Because when you get married, you got to understand, you marrying that person's issue. Y'all ain't saying nothing to me. And you know how it is when you're dating, you're trying to hide that stuff. You want that gal. You ain't trying to let her know you got those. So you're trying to protect her from seeing that. But what you need to do once you get to a certain level. See, this is what God says. God says, I'm able to handle everything. Don't be trying to hide nothing from me. Go ahead and open up because I know you. I see you. I see your nakedness. And you got to go ahead and say, God, you know what's in me. You know, you know, you see. Ain't no need of me hide. And ain't no need of me. Listen, this is why in the body of Christ, we got to learn how to be brothers and sisters. Ain't no need of us trying to fake and act like we don't need help. Come on here, look at your neighbor and say, because I know, I know you are a human being and your head just as bad as mine. You just like that brother in the movie, can't get right, life. Come on here. They say, what's wrong with it? Can't get right. His head bad, boss. Hello, somebody. Oh, oh, some folk, they just like can't get right until Jesus helps us. <laughs> Jesus will help you get right. He said, hey, his head bad, boss. He can't get right. <laughs> Woo! See, I know. I know my name will be can't get right if it won't for Jesus. I can't do this without Jesus. But he sanctifies us. He delivers us. He helps us. He helps me in my infirmities. In all of my weaknesses, he helps me. And I command some of you need to get off yourself. Some of you need to basically give yourself a break. Some of you got this perfectionist spirit that just because you, you, you ain't doing this, that, now, the other right, you ain't righteous because you living right. You righteous because he shed his blood. You can't live right and be righteous. Come on here. You can do everything right for the rest of your life and still be a filthy rag. We are only righteous through the blood of Jesus. It is only what Jesus has done for us that makes us righteous. And it doesn't give us permission to continue to be sinful but what it does is it changes us oh come on here salvation is about change and if you ain't changing I'm here to tell you in plain English you ain't saved if you ain't changing you ain't saved I didn't say if you're doing something that saved folk do. You can prophesy, preach, and teach. Just because you preach and teach and prophesy, I don't mean you're saved. Oh, there are a lot of preachers, pastors, prophets, apostles. Oh, my God, evangelists who ain't even saved. There are some people who go to school to learn how to do this. They are professional ministers. They know how to minister. They know theology. They know all the homiletics. They know what to do, but they don't know how to live right in their heart. Come on here. They know how to do right in front of you but when they go home see you ain't no more saved than you are by yourself come on here and you can do what you do in church but when you get home and you turn into that sinner you just a sinner y'all ain't got to say man because I found out when you learn how to develop your relationship with God you will fight yourself even in your private moments when you want to go off you say no sir I got to do this I got to defeat this thing I'm not going to let this get me no sir you'll say I'm not, I'm not finna masturbate today the devil is a lie I'm the no, sir, because if I masturbate, I'm going to want to get something later. Come on, masturbation does not satisfy sex drive. It creates it. Oh, I'm preaching good. And you got to learn how to deny your flesh. You got to tell yourself, no, I'm not going to get that drink today. The devil is a lie. I don't care who ain't looking. I don't care. Mm -mm. Uh -uh -uh. I'm not going to smoke that cigarette today. I got to fight. You got to kill them appetites that's destroying your walk with God. That's keeping you from getting to that place. You got to begin to get hungry for the righteousness of God and and that thing has to develop in you. See, we are so hungry to operate, but we're not hungry to become who we're supposed to be. We're hungry to do something, but we're hungry to do, but we can't just be. Because when you get to the place where you can just be who you are, you ain't even got to be doing nothing. And then when you see, when we're doing something, people are praising you. People are addicted to the attention of what they're doing. But when you're just sitting, sanctified waiting on the master ain't nobody calling you ain't nobody come on you, ain't nobody calling me my ministry is dying your ministry ain't dying your ministry is just like wine ah, it's just sitting there getting better 
Some of you on the back side of the mountain for a reason. You done walked to the other side. You're supposed to be on the back side, but you done came out. Come on here. You done came out and literally, uh, just because you're getting a few praises, just because a few folks say you are knowing it, honey, listen, you better listen to the Holy Ghost. You better let, because folk will tell you you are knowing it just to get you to do what they want you to do. Come on, somebody. You got to get delivered from the praise of men. You got to get delivered from the attention of men, and you got to learn how to get sanctified in God. When you get sanctified in God, you don't need folk to praise you. You don't need an amen crew. You don't have to basically be called to do nothing. People ain't got to be uh, in your inbox. Can you come and preach? You know you anointed and ain't nobody hearing you. You, you ain't even saying that, but you know you anointed. And you know that when God opens the door for me to do what I do, I'm going to do it to the glory of God. But until then, I'm just going to stay right here and keep basking in his presence and let him keep working some stuff out of me. There are some things about Vaughn that had to change. There are some things about Vaughn that needed to change before God could release certain things and certain, uh, if you will, anointings and grace over my life. Can I tell you, God will not release something to you that will destroy you and make him look bad. There are some deliverances that God is waiting on you to basically come into before he released that next level of oil on your life. I am preaching up in here to somebody. God is saying you got to get hungry for what I have for you, but you got to get hungry to become, not just to do. Because, see, people get excited because if they're doing, Pastor Linda, they become important. And one of the most dangerous spirits today in this generation is the need to be important. Important, God to mighty. Oh, if you ain't doing nothing, you feel like I ain't important. And so you got to basically go and now decide what God is calling you to do. Come on, you got to decide. Come on, I ain't heard God. You ain't seen God. You ain't felt God. But you're saying, I got to be important. Everybody's going forward and look like everybody's going forward. Look like everybody's ministry coming into fruition. And I'm still sitting back here. God still got me on this potter's wheel. I'm still serving the pastor, and I'm trying to figure out how the people get so anointed, and they ain't serve nobody. Y'all ain't saying nothing. How in the world we got such an anointing, but there is no history, no pedigree. There is nothing that we can look and say, well, who did you serve? Who, who, who's the, Whose hands did you pour water on? You a prophet. Did you pour water on somebody else's hand? Did you fall? Hello, somebody. Sometimes you got to carry somebody else's notebook. Sometimes you got to do, come on, somebody else's bidding. Sometimes you got to wash toilets. Sometimes you got to basically do stuff that folks say you're crazy. You ain't got no hello, but this is how you work your way into the anointing of God. God is not an intellectualist to where he just give you an anointing because you're smart. And let me go ahead and bust the bubble in this generation. Smart is not a gift. Now, we should be smart, but we think smart folk are gifted and, oh, that's God. No, no, there's some people who are elevated. But can I tell you, God can take somebody who can't have talk. Y'all ain't got to say amen. Oh, he called Moses, and Moses said, why are you calling me? You know I can't have to, to talk. I, 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 come on now, you know, you, you know. And now Moses was not ignorant because he was well trained in the Egyptian training and schools. He was educated, but he was not charismatic in the way that we would think people are today. And even when God called his own 12 disciples, uh, my sister, he called them, and they said, my God, what is he finna do with this goofy group? They, they were not intimidated by Jesus because they thought the brother had no leadership, if you will. Into, this, what, what, what? These are his disciples. Boy, he got a goofy tape. Paul picked it up and said he didn't go uh, to, 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 to the schools of divinity of his day. At least he called them, they would say, because of my intellect. He didn't call the nobles, but he called the flunkies. He, he, he called the folk who, who basically, uh, family said, they, they ain't going to mount them, be in jail before. Look at, look at her. She done had all them chairs. She ain't going to do nothing. Look at, God said, that's my baby right there. That, that, that's the one I want, the one that everybody done threw to the side, the one that everybody done uh, canceled out and said, ain't going to be nothing. Hello. And, and, and hello. And they, they, they looking at the ones that's in the house, but the one that's out in the field, y'all ain't saying nothing. The one that's keeping the sheep. Come on here. Oh, the prophet went and said, you ain't got no more sons. Uh, he said, well, we got one, but he ain't worth bringing to the house, fuck. 
and, and he said, that's the one. His name is David. That, that's the one. Go get him. Woo! Some of you were throwaways. You were rejects. Oh, my God. Said you never mount to nothing. Said you'd be in jail before you get 20-something, 30-something. Some of you basically, they said you never mount to nothing because you had your babies when you were teenagers. Said you never have nothing. You never be nothing. Some of you, your family wrote you off. Some of you, your teachers wrote you off. Some of you, nobody saw no worth in you. But God says the whole time, I, I created you before you was in your mother's womb. You were anointed before you ever got your mama ever got pregnant. Y'all ain't saying that. Some of you were ordained before your mama ever got pregnant. God says, I knew you because you was with me. Come on somebody. Oh, just because you were birthed of a a, a man and a woman don't mean you didn't exist. We existed before uh, we were ever in our mother's womb. He said, I knew you. Now, if he knew me, that means I was with him. I was with God before I was in my mama's womb. And I was God's thought, God's idea. So I don't care what you think about me. I pray today and I release an anointing in here. Some of you are getting ready to get over what folk think. My God, have I got a gift? God gave me a gift of I do not care. Do you hear what I said? Oh, folk be telling me what folks say. I do not care. Don't move me one bit. I sleep well when they talk about me. I sleep well when they try to you. I sleep well. God's getting ready to anoint some of you not to care what folk are saying. Some of you can't become who you're supposed to be because you got this thing where you are more invested in how people think and feel. Some of you wearing clothes you don't even wear because somebody said you need to wear this. Honey, I'm not trying to dress for you. Folk be like, well, listen, you need to. Ah, 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 ah. Come on. They say, oh, is he a preacher? He don't wear suits. Honey, I wear what I want to wear and I wear what I buy. Hello. And no, no, don't go buy me nothing. Tell me what if I buy you wet. The devil is a lie. I'm not getting ready to come up under your witchcraft. Just because you bought it don't mean I got to wear I got to like it. If it ain't me, I ain't doing it. My anointing ain't based on what I drive. I drive a truck. I don't drive no Mercedes. Come on, I'm F-150 strong. Cast the devil out driving a truck. Come on, somebody. I'm trying to fit no image. I'm saved. I'm sanctified. I belong to God. I got the Holy Ghost. God is raising up people that he can use in this last hour. Whew. Build the material. Let's get to this. Uh, man, I, I, I preach the message that, that uh, I got to get to my lesson. Y'all give me a couple more hours. <laughs> Let me get to this. I'm going to give you a little of this because we're talking about building material. Everybody's in the blessing. Bless me, bless me. But what can he do with you? And in the church, there are several messages that we, we teach in the church that we need to understand that there are times that we, every time we come in here, we come to bless you. But then there are times when God says, I need to now do something that's going to secure what I'm doing as far as to advance my church and my, and my work into the future. If you're not careful, and I want to say this for those who are pastoring, who are watching by way of Facebook, and if you know a pastor, send it to them. You got you to gotta be, uh, one of the things that, that God calls uh, leaders to, to carry his vision because he understands that, that there's enough in you that can, that can be used to help advance what I'm doing beyond just you and your generation. Impact Church must outlive me in order for it to solidify that this is truly of God. Woo. Because what God does is always beyond the generation that he, he releases it through. Oh, I'm preaching good. When he called Abraham, he, he said of Abraham, I know, watch this, that you will teach your children, your children's children. See, the bless me model of church and building is different. The bless me model is different from the building model. The building model assures that what God is doing can advance into the future because we're building something. And you got to understand this, brothers and sisters, when God gives you something, what he gave you is, is not just for you. And what he gives us, regardless to what it is, whatever vision you have, it may not come into fruition in its totality with just you. That's why you need to relax and just take the baton as far as you can take it. 
because this is a relay race. This ain't, mm -mm, this ain't no sprint. This, this thing is a marathon. And you're going to have to pass it on. This is why it's important that we raise up sons in ministries. Come on, we raise up sons. We raise up sons because sons always have a desire to see what God is doing through the work that he's given the father to come into fruition. When you're dealing with folk who are just up under the bless me model, they will basically sit up under your ministry, get blessed, get fat, and then just do what God has told them to do. Nothing wrong with that. But they will have no heart to posture themselves to take what God is doing beyond them into the future for uh, the sake of the church or anything else. Hello. Look at your neighbor and say, now, you ain't got to be as loud as your words, but don't, don't just get lost. When we preach what you want to hear, yeah, yes. And when we preach what you need to hear, you. Yeah. That's just human nature. It's human nature. Don't, don't be ashamed of it. It's just human nature. You know, you didn't grow up liking broccoli. Some. But you had to acquire a taste for it. Our challenge today, especially uh, in our community, in the black church especially, is that we, 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 we love the stuff that make us feel good. And we have no discipline for what we need. Whoo! Apostle was saying it. You put on an apostolic conference or put on a concert, you, you can't get enough seats. Then on four thirds, when we're trying to teach people to be financially empowered, y'all ain't got to say man, but I'm going to say it before I even say it. You, you can't get them to come out. Now, we need to be more economically literate. Not saying that we don't need the prophetic, we don't need to get up under the song for the Lord. We need all that too. But we ain't got no prophecy problem as much as we have a broke problem. <laughs> you let that barefooted prophet come to town, they're going to be lined up to get a blessing. You let somebody say that this man here is anointed to teach you how to manage and steward your money, and he got shoes on. <laughs> You'll go to the prophet and asking God to give you a prophetic miracle for some money. Be believing God that God, speak, Lord, where my money, Lord? Oh, where my money? God says, it's in that class that you won't attend. We'll receive a prophecy and pray to God it come to pass instead of going receiving knowledge and then have the power to bring it to pass. <laughs> Whew. We want God to do what God has been trying to give us power to do. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Concert be full. You let the person that they like to hear sing get up and it just brings me oh yeah in here packed out beyond the veil come time for you to come and sing to heaven in prayer you got something to do you got to wash the cat <laughs> the cat become more important than prayer but yet you took off work Borrowed money to get the ticket to go to the concert. <laughs> Come in and you feel good. And ain't nothing wrong with it. I'm not painting like it's something wrong with it. But it's something wrong with our mind when we can basically make all kinds of sacrifices to get the blessing model. But not position ourselves to become part of the building model. <laughs> oh, glory to God. <laughs> And write this down, I'm going to prepare, because as we go into the building model, we have to understand there are three things that you need in anything if you're going to build in advance. And we all are building something, whether we know it or not, and some of it is intentional, some of it is not. Some people don't even know they you know, building and don't know what they're building, but you're working on something. something that there's what we call causation. Every action and every action has a consequence. Every decision has a consequence. Deciding not to get up and go to work has a consequence. Deciding to go to work has a consequence. Deciding not to go to school, not to take that class, not to get that, has a consequence. 
it's time to get that promotion, you may not be qualified to go and make the sacrifice and to spend all that time uh, doing what you do. Uh, 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 Dr. Angie B. is going to pay off. They may not understand what's wrong with us. She, you know, uh, uh, but God says now, listen, now, 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 especially when it is something that you believe in your heart that this is the will of God. My wife has constantly prayed and like, God, because she's like, I ain't got time just to be doing stuff. And we don't have the resources just to be doing stuff that cost what it costs to get get this doctoral just to be doing it. It's got to be a, a, a reason beyond just me. And, and she was constantly assessing it's not my ego. It's not. The, no, no. And, and it was it was. And, and then she come to realize purpose, her purpose. Glory to God. But there's a, there's, a, there's a consequence. There's a consequence mm -hmm. for those who dropped out of school. Decided, I'm just going to do it. I'm going to drop out. I ain't going to class. There's a consequence. The consequence is you just get, take the job that's, that you can. And, you know, hello? You don't have that key to get through the doors that you could have gotten through. Hello? Consequence. And, and, and what we need to teach our children and our young people, don't do like a lot of us have to do. Come on, you shouldn't be in school. I told my wife, I said, you know, it's unfortunate, but, you know, it is what it is, you know. But, I mean, shouldn't be 50 back in school. 50 back in school. Hello? Y'all ain't saying that. We need to pray that our young people get a focus. Get a focus. Come on, as a consequence sitting around playing uh, the game all day and all night. Come on here, and they ain't getting no money for it. Oh, y'all ain't got to say, man. The, the, the time that you sit and play in the game, you could have been in a class, an a, a, a online class. And that same, hello, you ain't got to say, man. There's a consequence. And then when you get 40 and you realize, man, I need more. I need to do more. Now you're 40, 45 trying to take out a loan to go back to school when you could have done it when you were 20, when you were 30. But nobody taught you to have a focus. And then nobody taught you to discipline yourself. Because to get where God is trying to get you, you're going to have to have some self-discipline because you're going to have to do some stuff that you don't feel like doing you're going to have to be able to get some stuff done and you don't want to do it but because it's got to get done and ain't nobody going to do it for me you got to have discipline write it down I got to discipline myself you can't build with undisciplined people you can't accomplish nothing with undisciplined people we can't do great ministry with undisciplined people Discipline is a powerful word. You can't lose weight without discipline. You can't get your money right without discipline. You can't fix your marriage without discipline. Discipline is a powerful word. We got to have discipline. And you're going to have to learn how to deny yourself. And you got to learn how to assess your appetite to develop discipline. Disciplined people learn how to control that. I'm not talking about just the food appetite as it relates to food. You got to have, the Bible says a poor man will be, or a, a, a man who loves pleasure will be poor. People who love to have a good time ain't going to have much money because they're going to spin it up trying to have a good time. That's the Bible. Man who loves pleasure will be poor. Because self-gratification will always, always choke his last dollar. He'll take his last dollar to go to the movie instead of putting it to the side because he needs gas. Come on, he wouldn't, he won't, come on, undisciplined folk will not put money to the side basically to, 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 to take care of what they need to take care of. They will basically waste their last and come and ask for yours. Yeah. When they need something, y'all ain't got to say, man. But discipline says, I can't do everything this week. And, and so you got to learn how to just sit still because I can't go everywhere. Why? Because I ain't got but $37 worth of gas money and I got to get to work and I got to get to work to get in there. And I build that. It ain't just going to be that way every week. But see, in order to change a certain circumstance, you got to discipline yourself to get yourself out of that play. We ain't got to, oh my God, we got to have discipline. 
And for those of us who've been there and got the T-shirt, you ought to tell the young folk, I got that T-shirt, baby, and that T-shirt don't wear good. You don't need to, I got that mug. You don't want to, you don't want to, you don't want to get this age and trying to figure out what you're going to do. You now getting 40 and trying to figure out what you're going to do. Right now, while our children are in their teens and our children are in their twenties, we need to be challenging them. What is your vision? What is your passion? What do you do well? What is your gift? What do you have in you? What did God put in you that is a solution to the world? God created you and you are a solutionist and you got to learn what that solution is. You solve somebody's problem with your gift, with your grace, and we got to challenge one another. Stop waiting till we get 40 and 50 and then we figure out, ah, there it is. What in the world? And I know that's sometimes how it is and it's never too late to start, but can we reach back and help those who basically, I'm not going to let my children get to their 30 and 40 and then no discipline and discipline demands here's the second thing write this down you got to develop routine this is why we got to start coming to church regular it's routine why does what does it come to church to? God is, is challenging your fidelity and your faithfulness. Routine. Routine creates discipline. You have no discipline outside of routine. You get a routine. I'm trying to get my routine back uh, in the gym, Apostle Corey. I'm coming for the skinny guys this year. I'm coming for y'all. Coming for the skinny brothers. No disrespect. Routine. Routine is, this is what I'm going to do. Discipline says, I'm going to do it regardless of how I feel. I cannot not go to the gym because I don't feel like it. I set a routine, gym. And once you set a routine, listen, listen. Don't let people dictate your priorities. I have folk who, who, who used to know that I worked out, you know, every day at a certain time, they, and they wanted to meet, and they said, well, you know, we, you ain't doing nothing but going to the gym. And I'd be like, you're exactly right. <laughs> I'm going to the gym, and that is a time that I have set for me. That ain't just because you don't think that's that important and what is important to you. You think I can break my gym time to sit down and, and hear you. You might be in a life crisis, but you're going to have to wait till I get out in the gym, I, and my schedule ain't free. Hello, <laughs> look at your name and tell your neighbor, your tithe ain't that powerful. I pay my tithes. I got a right to see you. When I get free. Hello, I'm sorry. Y'all ain't used to a delivered pass. I'm sorry. My apologies. I'm, I'm sorry. I'm, I forgot, you know. You know. I don't want to mess up nobody's perception of me. Remember that anointing? Still got it. <laughs> I'll tell you how to be free. People think about it. I, did, I, I had somebody literally challenge me, Prophet Jack, well, you, you just go to the gym. Like, that's, that's one of my greatest investments. Hello. One of the greatest investments you can do is invest in your health. One of the great, we spend most of our life trying to get wealthy and then use all that wealth to try to get well because we didn't take care of ourselves. Yeah. Stacking paper, building money so you can just go to the doctor to try to, no, take care of your health. And it's not easy. And I'm not an expert. Don't have the right to stand up here and talk about because my diet is not right and I do a lot. But I understand I have a conscience and a conviction and I had to tell this person, what, what's important to me is important to me. What's important to you is important to you. And I don't, I don't have to break my gym time just to prove to you that I'm a good pastor to come and sit. And when I did get with this person, what they wanted to talk about, my mouth dropped. <laughs> you wanted me to break my schedule to talk to you about this. And I was so great, which I won't, you know, I don't do it. And when I, when I had a routine, 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 it was like routine. It was routine. It was routine. They, I mean, we got so, Kathy, it was a routine was so, it was like boom. But then 
Routine creates the habit. Now, watch this. Watch this. Habit is more powerful than any demon you are fighting. Woo! God to mighty. See, you can cast the devil out, but you can't cast the habit out. Once that habit gets ingrained into your character, habit creates character. What you habitually do is what you become. It's who you become. When you create a routine, you get this. This is not just dieting. This is not just, this is also prayer. Some of you need a routine in prayer. Don't wait till you feel like praying. Set a routine, but don't become religious with it to now it's just a routine. Learn how to hear the Holy Ghost. Let the Holy Ghost call you. Let the Holy Ghost. Haven't you ever had plans and the Holy Ghost uh, uh, sneak a fast in on your plans? You'd be just like, not now, Lord. Not now. We going to Raleigh to our favorite spot. Not now. Apostle Cecil's angel brought me something I think she, you know, got from you. It was a gleam from you. She's like, let's get, I was like, and, and she know me. She's like, I know you got to be led, but I just thought maybe you would, you know, step in with me on this. Took me a couple of days to say yes. <laughs> it's like, look, I was like, he ain't, I ain't, ain't hearing him say fast like that. And then we get spiritual. I mean, because I'm in my word and I know the Lord. I don't have to do all that like y'all do. Y'all need to fast every week. See, I'm good and say, Holy Ghost said, man, hush. I don't know how y'all Holy Ghost talk, the Holy Spirit talked to y'all, but he talked to me just the way he knew I needed to hear. He tell, he said, man, hush. <laughs> Bit more fast than the way you need to. Go ahead and, and commit to that, which is the third thing that you need to have in order to achieve anything and to be building material. Commitment. You got to be disciplined. You got to set routines to keep your discipline. And then in order for the routine to be in any way advantageous to you, you have to commit. You have to commit yourself to that. And then when you do all of that, and this is something that is just, and we're going to close out with this, and then we're going to get into the building material because God wants to create building material out, out of who we are. The Bible says in the gospel according to Matthew chapter 16, when Jesus told Peter upon this rock, I will build my church. If he's going to build, if he's going to advance, listen, I said this to, 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 to social media out there, for those of you who pass and lead, anything you're building, if you have a business, if you're going to build anything, you got to build with people who are building material. You can't build with wishy-washy, flimsy, uh, uncommitted, come on people who ain't certain. And watch this, people who don't make what you're doing a priority. Woo, y'all ain't saying. Now, now I'm, I'm, I'm in real estate, and so I watch the building process. It's a very unique thing when you watch a house or a building get literally built and erected from nothing all the way up. That foundation is obviously, we know that's the most important, right? Holds everything. You need foundational people. There are all types of people in the house of God. You need foundational people. Foundational people, they just there, man. That foundation is there. Then you have people who basically become like structure. They, they put up the structure. They put up the, 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 the structure of the building. And then it goes on, and you got all the infrastructure of the building, the wiring, the plumbing, all of that. And then you have things like accessories, things that give the building appearance, gives it you know great look, looks good. And... Everybody, you know, one or the other, I mean, and it doesn't mean that one is, you know, that, uh, but you got to have a commitment and you have to basically be in a place where you understand, look, what God is doing and what God is desiring to do, he desires to do it as he told Peter, upon this rock, I'll build my church. Peter, Petra, 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 rock, upon this rock. Jesus even said that when, when you build a house, it's like a man who built a house on the sand. That when the winds and the storms came, it, it was not conducive to stand. Only way you can take ministry, take vision, take business into the future is you got to have strong foundation. And then in today's time, you also have to know where you're building and what you're building to know the type of material you're building with. God Almighty. Down in Florida now, when they build homes in Florida now, down that way because they have basically seen the increase in storms down in Florida, down in uh, like Miami, down in parts of, of even uh, Louisiana and places. Now they're building them now storm weather, if you will, ready. 
they, they, they got hurricane material. It's amazing. I was watching something. And now, now watch this because it depends on what you have to endure. May de, de, it'll dictate the cost. So you can't build a house that is built to weather a, 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 a hurricane and build it basically with a North Carolina budget. Well, I want a hurricane-proof house, but, you know, here, man, you know, you could build that for, build a house that size around here for about maybe 250 That house will cost you about $2 million. Same square footage, same, same, if you will, layout. It's just the material costs more. Y'all ain't saying that. And for, for, for you to be building material, it costs more. Some of you wondering what you had to go through, what you had to go through for. God, you took through all this. God said, because what I'm building and what I'm going to do, you had to go through that. You had to be hurt like you was hurt and overcome it because I need you to understand how to take a licking and keep on moving. I need you to be able to endure folk talking about you. Well, God, why did I have to go through that? Why did you allow me to go? Why did they have to hurt me like this? Because what I'm getting ready to do with you and your future is going to demand that you have the type of stamina that you can handle folk running you down and it don't move you. Yes, it almost took you out, but I kept you. I picked you up. Yes, you thought you weren't going to make it through this, but you made it, didn't you? And I built you strong. I built you God tough. I built you to be able to handle folk. God, why did I have to go through that experience? That thing hurts so bad. God says because I'm getting ready to make you part of a foundation. I'm getting ready to do something in you. I'm getting ready to build something uh, that's going to demand that you have the endur endurance of a foundation because the foundation has to be able to hold all of the house. All of the weight is on the foundation and you've got to have folk past the Katina that has a foundational spirit that they can handle the weight of ministry. They can handle the weight of business. You can't put somebody who's built for the roof at the foundation because they won't last. They'll crack under pressure. But you got to have folk deacon who can handle that type of weight. Somebody say, I feel like I'm foundational material because I done been through hell and high water. Come on here. I done fought the devil and won. Y'all ain't saying nothing. Oh my God, I got scars, I got bruises, I got testimonies, I got, listen, I can show you where I had that many stitches in the spirit, but nonetheless, God kept me, and some of you went through what you went through, and you survived, and you know that you're stronger than you never, you're stronger than you ever thought you could be. God says, I need you to understand that I need you to be in a place where you can handle. Some of you have gone through things even in your families and even in your life. You've gone through things, God says, because the people that you're going to talk to, they, they, they're not going to they're not going to believe or even think there's anybody who can even relate to where they are. But here you come. Oh, been there, done that. Got the t-shirt and the mug. Y'all ain't saying nothing. Oh, and you can help. See, you can help folk when you've been there and come out. Come on here. When you been through the floods and you can come out and say you didn't drown. When you went through the fire but you didn't get burnt up. Come on here. You was in the furnace. They heated it up. Come on. The man who threw you in got burnt up. But you went in and played oh my God. You had no. you went in and you and your partners played spades in the midst of the furnace. Come on. Sat down and said God is keeping us. Uh, come on. Here. Some of you been in the lion's den uh, and you got a pillow now made out of lion. Y'all ain't saying nothing. Oh my God. You got lion as a pillar. Stop underestimating your power and your ability. Some of you have been to the bottom, but God Almighty, I know y'all don't listen to rap, but there was a rapper who said we started at the bottom, but now we're here. And I ain't trying to play his song and preach his song, but I believe that's just a reality for some of us. We started from the bottom, now we're here. Where we at? We at the top, honey. Come on, look at your neighbor and say, you need to call us and check and see what the weather is, because we on top now, honey. Come on here. Let me tell you, the weather is good up here, too. Bring your shades, because it's bright up here. Some of you, I prophesy that God get ready to bring you from what seemed like the worst place of your life. And he's getting ready to bring you to the place where you never thought you'd be. Some of you had not ever even thought you could be as happy as you are about to become. I'm prophesying right now. Some of y'all need to grab that. Some of you are about to receive, I'm talking about blessings of joy and happiness and peace that you thought you never had. You've been fighting all your life. But I hear the Lord saying the warfare is about to be over. 
Come on, take me something deeper than that, uh, brother. Give me something prophetic and deeper. That's good, but I want something strong. I'm getting ready to stand to your feet. I feel the prophetic power of God. Some of you get ready to shift because God is He's redoing the foundation of your spirit. No, no, you ain't going to break either. You ain't going to break. 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 Come on, come on. You're not going to break. You're not going to break. You're not going to break. You're not going to give out. Some of you, listen, it's the last, the, the, the devil had his last time of pushing you back into that place where you just, whew, that dark place. Some of you coming out of the closet that dark place. I prophesy today you're coming out of the closet. Some of you, you have been in uh, what they call a stupor. It's like you've just been in a trance. Spiritually, in life. God says you're coming out. You're coming out. Yeah, you're coming out. God's getting ready to remind some of you of the bear that you, bought, you fought like David. David, David, he had the courage to face Goliath because he had the testimony of how God kept him in the midst of fierce battles when he was keeping the sheep. Some of you, I see you mounting up. Yeah, my, my. Glory. Rika, my, my. Ah, you're mounting up. I feel this in the spirit. I see you mounting up with wings of an eagle. I see your strength coming back. I, I feel this in the spirit. I feel like God's saying, I'm getting ready to renew strength today. Some of you, you're getting ready to get your fight back like you never had. Some of you, you're getting ready to get the strength of your youth back. In the name of Jesus, I prophesy that God is getting ready to bring back the strength of your youth. Whew. I hear the Lord saying that some of you are about to begin to become very strategic in prayer. You will not war as one who is not skilled, just beating the air in desperation. God says some of you getting ready to hit targets, even in prayer. Yana, glory, makatata, yemama. Thank you, God. Some of you, God says, I'm getting ready to give you precision, even in warfare. I prophesy that the Lord will increase discernment in this place now. That God will give you greater levels of discernment. Brothers and sisters, you do not get discernment because it's just being released and handed out. Discernment will be something that will demand you get into prayer. Discernment will be something that will demand you fast more. Discernment will demand that you get in your word like you never have before. The Holy Ghost just don't reveal stuff to us just because, oh, you won't discernment. You're going to posture yourself. But I hear the Lord say some of you getting ready to receive greater levels of discernment, meaning you're getting ready to posture yourself to hear and see the Holy Ghost and what he reveals like never before. I decree and declare that some of you get ready to come out of those dark places, dark places. I see God. This is an open vision that I'm seeing, and I see people coming out of depression. I see whoo, demons of depression that have basically worked through circumstances and situations. I even hear the Lord saying that some, yes, there has even been chemical depression that has affected your chemical balance in your body. The stress and the things that you've gone through has affected certain levels of your physical body. God says, I'm getting ready to even restore. Even restore. Mm. Thank you, Jesus. Depression right now is being broken off of you in the name of Jesus. Come on, if you can receive this, if this fits any of you, some of you, if you need to press into this altar, I, I, I feel like th there's an anointing and we'll lay hands on you, but some of you, God's getting ready to bring you into a space that the enemy has fought to keep you out of. He's fought to keep you out of. The devil does not want you to be free. He does not want you to be delivered. But God says that even today, I'm getting ready to bring you into a deliverance that the enemy cannot stop. I'm going to lay my hands on you. Apostle, can you get my oil up under my seat right there? God says, I'm going to lay my hands on you and I'm going to release the anointing of God. And he's going to break off of you any and everything that the enemy has been able to use to keep you in places of depression, places of brokenness. I hear the Lord saying that there are even those of you who 
even struggle receiving what God is saying many times to you because of past experiences. You have been let down so much that it's almost difficult for you to believe that anything is going to change. God says, I'm even going to restore your hope. I'm going to give you hope. I'm going to help you have an anticipation that tomorrow will be better than today. That's it. Lift your hands. I'm going to lay my hands on you and I'm going to release the oil of God. Hallelujah. Father, I release even now. Strong deliverance. Strong deliverance. Strong deliverance. You shall come out of that place. I break off of you everything that the enemy has been able to operate in. And your mind, your spirit, and your whole life is about to come in alignment with the purpose of God for your life. I hear the Lord saying that what the canker worm and the palmer worm have eaten and what the devil thought he has stolen from you. God says that he shall restore and he shall replenish and he shall return it sevenfold. I lay my hands on you and I free you, daughter, in the name of Jesus. I stand as a proxy for the deliverer, Jesus Christ, and I command your deliverance in the name of Jesus. That's it. Praise him, baby. Praise him. In the name of Jesus, I command even now that you're coming out of that place, that God is bringing you out of that place. You're coming out of that place. You're coming into the place that God has predestined for you. Sister Talisha, I hear the Lord saying that there have been warfare that has tried you and has fought you. And it's hard sometimes for you to even see or feel like that things will change. There are things that God says I desire to do, but even there have been things that have been created in your mind and your spirit and have become limiting belief systems. God says today I snatch it off of you. I pull off of you everything that the enemy has been able to do and all the things that he has built around your mind. Today I command in the name of Jesus that even now every limiting belief come down. Even now we command every demonic force that has even brought depression over you. Even times at times you thought you was like, God, I don't know if I'm going to be able to to survive this. God says not only will you survive this, but you're coming out and you're coming out with power to be able to help. And God says you shall return even in the spirit to help those who have gone through deep dark places of depression, life cycles that have caused you. I'm talking about pain and torment. I break it off of you now in the name of Jesus. And I command right now, deliverance even now. Prophet Jacqueline, I want you to touch her belly. And I command even now, a bubbling in the spirit. I command even now. In the name of Jesus, we deliver your daughter, Father. In Jesus' name. That's it. Give him praise. Give him praise. Yeah, not my mind. Come on, right where you are in your seat, just intercede. Lay my hands and I release the oil of God to bring you into a space of great deliverance. Depression broken. Low self-esteem broken. I snatch off of you low self-esteem. I snatch off of you low self-esteem. I snatch off of you low self-esteem. I snatch off of you generational curses things that have been said and released that still lodged in your mind and in your spirit. I command right now that the fire of the Holy Ghost burn up everything that is not of God. I command in the name of Jesus spirit of depression that haunts you come off. Hear the Lord saying I'm going to restore years of your life. Yeah, my, I'm going to restore. Yes, 
it, it's not going to be obviously physical. As as the man asked Jesus, how can a man be born again? How can he go back? No, that's not. It's in the spirit. God says, I'm getting ready to redeem time. I'm getting ready to bring you back into a space and into a place, even in your spirit, where the enemy thought that he has gotten the best years of your life. God says the best is yet to come for you. I prophesy in the name of Jesus that God is getting ready to give you new energy for life, new energy for living. God is getting ready to give you a momentum in life. God is getting ready to bring you to a place of happiness. God's getting ready to show you every gift and talent and ability that's in you. And God says, yes, yes, yes. I hear your heart. I hear your heart. You have cried out and you've asked God when, where, and how, God. God says, now this is the time and now is the season. I lay my hands and I free you, daughter. I break off of you the spirit of depression. I command that Leviathan spirit witchcraft broken off of you I decree and declare that word curses spoken and released around your life even now in the name of Jesus I break it off of you I decree and declare that the Holy Ghost free your mind you are a child of God you are a child of God you are a daughter of Zion and you have a right to be free in the name of Jesus. Somebody give God praise. In the name of Jesus, daughter, I break off of you all forms of depression, all forms of whoo, hindrances and things that have held you up. Ah, there is another level. There is another gear. There is another place. The enemy will want you to say and think that this is it. This is this this is a capsule. This capulates your life. You've reached the ceiling. God says the ceiling can't even be seen, daughter. I prophesy right now that everything that the enemy has even spoken and released about your past uh, that causes you at times to be even at times uh, stunted in just moving forward because you're looking back. Today we break that off of you. We decree and declare that there is nothing from your past that will hinder your future. That even right now that the Lord is putting fire in your feet and God is even now I'm putting a fire in your belly and I decree and declare that there is nothing that the enemy will be able to do to bring you into places and pockets of depression even into places and pockets of worryation I break it off of you in the name of Jesus and even as at times you are sensitive to what think people think and feel and there's like this overly careful spirit about you that you're just going to be cautious you're not you're, you're not you don't intentionally want to hurt or harm anybody because that's not your spirit but sometimes you are so cautious of certain things to the point where it even hinders and trips you up. And God says, I'm freeing you from that. I hear the Lord saying that you owe no man nothing. Even the enemy will even try to have you at times thinking that you still owe somebody something. But the devil is a lie. You are free, daughter, in the name of Jesus. I break off of you every limiting belief. I decree and declare that everything the devil has tried, it no longer works. And I anoint you to move in to your next level of freedom, your next level of deliverance, your next level of joy. And I prophesy increase over you in the spirit realm. The Lord says, I shall reveal great mysteries and I shall even take you even into a place well, I will show you the next level of your ministry, gift, and grace. The spirit of encouragement that is over you. And I even wake up the prophetic grace that's in you. There is an anointing on you even now. I release the hand of God upon you. It's something about writing that I hear, Sister Court, that you will even have prophetic writings. There will be things that God will show you. Some of them you will release verbally but there will be things that God says I'm going to have you write and I hear something about the pen that God says I'm getting ready to anoint the penmanship in you I don't know if you are a writer I don't know if you like writing but I hear the Lord saying that I'm going to cause you to begin to write you will write visions and you will write things and those things will be things that others when they read it and when they see it it's going to unlock others I hear the Lord saying that you will operate like Miriam Yekata. Woo! Even your praise will be prophetic. Your praise will be prophetic. That when you open your mouth and praise God for victories and open your mouth and praise God for blessings, that I will begin to open up doors for others. 
in the name of Jesus. And I decree and declare your liberty in Jesus Christ. Somebody give the Lord praise. Father, I lay my hands on this, your daughter. I decree and declare in the name of Jesus that God, you bring her to a greater level of deliverance. Mm, that God, even now, things that may challenge her in her mind and her spirit at times when she is even at a place of uncertainty. Woo! I hear the Lord saying that I'm getting ready to bring clarity and direction. I'm getting ready to bring clarity and direction. Clarity and direction. There are things that the Lord says that even at times you continue to bring upon yourself by way of how you even perceive and think, uh, even in, in things from things that you, ah, oh, I didn't do that right, I didn't do this, and this happened, and that happened, and sometimes you even bring that upon yourself, and sometimes you're hard on yourself, and sometimes you feel like you're trying to measure up, and sometimes you feel the pressure of, am I living up to the expectation? God says, I free you even now from the burden of even those things that even you have at times brought on yourself thinking that I got to do this right. And even the pressure, ooh, the pressure. Oh, I'm under this pressure. I got, no, God says I take that pressure off of you. And God says I'm freeing you to live and I'm freeing you to be. And I even hear the Lord saying, I'm getting ready to bring a revelation to your spirit about your future. You're going to be sure. You're going to be certain. And God says that you're going to see and understand and there's going to be clarity. And there are gifts and there are talents that God has placed within you. And God says I'm going to give you even a vision for your future. I'm going to unlock purpose and destiny. And God says that I shall bless you and you shall see a day even in this very near future where literally God is going to open up doors for you and opportunities will come to you. And God says you're about to come into a season of your life where God is getting ready to give you, oh my God, a greater peace about your identity. You don't have to live up under the shadow of mama, daddy, anybody else. God says I'm getting ready to free you and you get ready to become the woman of God but I see a powerful woman of God I see a gifted talented woman of God that is coming out Woo, prophet Jay I need your hand I stir up the gift of God in you there is so much in you Rekata. and you don't desire light you don't desire to be in front you're not asking for this that and the other but God says what I'm about to do in your life God says I'm going to put a light on you and you're going to be a light unto the world and God says even now my mind, I'm going to give you great wisdom even the people that you keep company with and people that literally desires to keep company with you. God says, I'm going to give you a sensitivity to even in relationships. And God says, you're going to be able to discern greater the people who have no future with you and you will not waste time because God says that I'm about to bring you and I hear God says, into a place, into a season of clarity. Clarity in your hands, whatever your hands touch, it shall prosper. I hear the Lord saying clarity, understanding, vision, and direction. You are about to take off. I prophesy that even now, even now, May the 5th, oh, not mine, 2023, the Lord anoints you. And great things are about to happen for you. Doors are about to open. You will understand purpose and destiny for your life like never before. Even in the near future, God is going to give you revelation. And you are about to mount up in Jesus' name. Somebody give the Lord praise. Woo! I break off of you, daughter, in the name of Jesus, depression. I break off of you the spirit of depression. I command in the name of Jesus that the demon and the spirit of depression that has even tried to wear you down to the point of total destruction. Today we speak life to your spirit. We decree and declare that not only are you being free and delivered from the spirit of depression, whoo, God says I'm even going to heal even in your body. Where the devil desired to even cause what he desired to happen in your mind, it is now begin to manifest in your body. 
And I command healing over you now in the name of Jesus. I release the miracle of healing. I decree and declare that the Lord restore you. That the Lord restore you. That the Lord release a spirit of restoration over you. That God brings you back to a place of life and living. To a place of healing and deliverance. That the Lord will even cause you to walk in greater levels of blessedness. What everything the devil told you and not told you but literally you lost. I hear the Lord saying that I'm going to cause it to come back. God says you shall have fullness of life. God says I'm going to restore not only in your body and in your mind but in your relationships. Yeah, not my mind. So God says even now I release the oil of God to bring healing over you in the name of Jesus. I break witchcraft off of you now in the name of Jesus. I command the spirit of witchcraft to be broken. I command spells that have been released. I command curses that have been spoken over you. Reman so uh, devil you a lie. I bind and break it right now. I cast you out in the name of Jesus demon. There's a demon that wants to occupy you. It's a demon that wants to control your life. There's a spirit that's even now saying that he owns you but I rebuke you devil in the name of Jesus. You do not own this daughter. This is a child of God and I speak life over you. You shall live and not die. I speak to your body. I command your limbs to be restored. I command health back to your body. I command that God regulates your mind and I prophesy that even in the months to come that you're going to begin to feel even in your body what God is doing in your spirit I bind arthritis I command that demon to come out of the joints some of it is not just genetically some of it is demonic because of what the devil has even done and tried to do to your mind. He thinks he has access to your body. But today we cast you out. Spirit of infirmity, come off of this daughter. And I command healing in the name of Jesus. I break off of you that spirit that has become dependent. That spirit that has become dependent. That's what drugs and all types of stuff that they give you make you dependent. That's why it's witchcraft control your mind but we break it off of you I'm not telling you continue to take your medicine as the spirit leads you you begin to make any adjustments but there's a spirit of witchcraft that's even pharmaceutical that's coming through the things that they have given you and you have become almost dependent upon something that you got to take to live but God says I've never commanded you to live by appeal and I command you to live by my word that man shall live by the word of God and I release and free you in the name of Jesus. In Jesus' name, somebody give God praise. Y'all just walk with me this way. Hey! Yeah, not my soul. Thank you for your patience. Come on, if you're still here praying, believe in God. Father, I lay my hands and I decree and declare. Oh, Jesus. Oh, I command healing in your body. I command healing in your spirit. I know you are a man of faith. You've been through a lot. But I need you to say it out of your mouth. I believe God. I believe God. Father, right now, I command all forms of doubt that comes in many different ways. Not that he doubts from his mouth or even in his heart, but there are things that even he encounters that sometimes challenges him. I break off of him even sometimes the spirit that comes to try to discourage you because your heart is bigger than your condition in that your situation has limited your heart and your heart service not only to God but to people. You have a heart that's so big and the devil wanted to cripple and just break you down because of just the servant and the blessing that you are to the body of Christ and to the kingdom of God and to the work of God. Today I break everything that the enemy has even placed over you. I command in the name of Jesus. Now when I speak of witchcraft sometimes people who take medicine and, 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 and I do this myself because I take one pill but I always pray and break off of me the spirit of witchcraft 
witchcraft so that I don't become dependent. And it's not for any of us, and it's certainly not for you, Deacon, to begin to say, I got to stop taking anything. No, this is just so that the Holy Ghost can begin to move and release even now the oil of God to bring you into a space of complete healing. I break witchcraft that comes through the pharmaceutical and the drugs. I break it off of you in the name of Jesus. Father, we are not dependent upon medicine. We are not dependent upon man, but you are a healer, and I stand as an apostle of the Lord Jesus Christ, and I decree and declare that as we lay hands on this brother, that God, you even being, bring healing to his body, bring healing to his body. I thank you that depression no longer has the ability to exist in your mind. Even now, as strong as you are, many people will never know when you are depressed because you're strong. They don't know the internal suffering sometimes you go through, but God says, I'm getting ready to bring you to a place where literally the enemy will not be able to even entertain himself in your mind with those things. And God says, even as the enemy comes to try you, begin to open your mouth and prophesy. Begin to speak against those spirits. And I break off of you discouragement. I break off of you all forms of depression. I command life. I command health. I command healing. Oh God, I command blessings. I command that the Lord will even restore unto you years that the enemy has even taken and hindered you from your best life and the best is yet to come. I command that God give you strength and bring back the strength of your youth. I decree and declare in the name of Jesus a miraculous move of God in your body. Devil, you are a liar. We serve the healer. We serve the healer. We serve the healer. I need everybody in this place who know God is a healer. Say it. We serve a healer. I decree and declare healing. God's getting ready to give you supernatural strength. He's getting ready to give you wisdom. And it's going to release and translate into complete healing. In the name of Jesus, I decree and declare depression broken, broken off of you. Dark places broken off. I release you from every burden that you carry that's not yours. I hear the Lord saying demonic burdens demonic responsibilities mm, things that you have taken responsibility for that don't belong to you but you have taken them anyway and because you have the enemy says I'm going to wear you out with them I break it off of you in the name of Jesus I anoint you to have wisdom to know when you are taking other people's responsibilities versus when you are just helping and God says I've called you to help but I've not called you to be responsible for somebody else's responsibility and I break that off of you and it's in your inherent nature your temperament and the way you're made you love people and you love helping it's hard for you to say no no, but I hear the Lord saying that I'm getting ready to anoint you for the preservation of your own life for the preservation of your own future and God says that you're getting ready to live because a lot of your life has been spent trying to get other people where they need to be and God says I want you to turn them over to me right now I break off of you witchcraft the spirit of witchcraft controlling hey God I take authority and don't be surprised because sometimes uh, those witches are our children. Those witches are our children. Uh, they want to control you emotionally, but I break it off of you in the name of Jesus. Uh, they want to say, Mama, it's your fault, uh, but it is not your fault, saith the Lord. And I break it off of you in the name of Jesus. I command that demon to loose and let you go. You're not responsible for the totality of your children's situation and even the burden that you have carried at some point you have basically even told yourself that if I had done this better my babies wouldn't be where they are and God says I take and break the spirit of guilt off of you I break it off of you you are not responsible and yes you are very intelligent and you have even to a degree you understand psychologically I'm not responsible but it's like that burden I hear the Lord saying they're demonic burdens you've taken them you've basically put them in your bosom I command that they come up and come out now in the name of Jesus every demonic responsibility meaning what you have been responsible for but it's not yours there are things that we do to help people and the time to help people is when we see them being responsible. If they're not responsible, they don't deserve your help. Be responsible. 
But when you bring your responsibilities to me and ask me to take what belongs to you, no, 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 that's yours. I'll help you, but I won't take your responsibilities. And sometimes that's hard, especially with our children, because we want so badly for them to do well and feel good. But God says sometimes we even hurt our children when we take their responsibilities. We ruin them, and they become irresponsible. But today, the Lord has freed you and delivered you. And I hear the Lord saying to your union, Deacon, you guys are getting ready to have some of the best times of your life, even in your marriage. I prophesy life to your marriage. You guys love each other. You love your families. But God says, I'm getting ready to give you the anointing to enjoy each other. And I bless this union in the name of Jesus. And there have been those who have talked about this union, those who have declared that it will never work, those who have placed dates on when it will end. But God says that it will not end. It will not end. But I will bless this union. And you shall be blessed in your coming and in your going. And God says, I shall meet all of your needs and I shall provide for I am your exceeding and great reward. Somebody give him praise. Woo! Almost there. Thank you, daughter. So patient. I release over you the oil and the blessing of God to free you from depression. I break off of you spirit of depression that tries to challenge you and tries to bring you into a dark place. But the Lord says today that I'm giving you a new strength in your fight. Oh God, you are a warrior. You have a spirit of faith about you also. And God says that you know how to fight and you know how to war. But there are days and times where it seems like the enemy gets you in a corner. And it's like, my God, you're the type of person as well that it's hard for people to identify you in any type of like, is she going through? Is she struggling? Because you know how to walk in the spirit and you know how to keep your head up. But God says, I see you and I know even those days and those times where you're dealing with deep, dark places of struggle and depression but today I anoint you and I break you free and I command even now that God bring you into a new place and a new space even now I decree and declare that the enemy that desires to keep you in a place of torment I break off of you the spirit of torment and the Lord says I release healing in your heart God says I'm going to heal where you have been broken and wounded in your spirit even over this last incident with your son God says I'm healing right now now. I'm even giving you oil and I'm healing you and I'm going to release in you even the anointing to begin to pray for people around that situation. God says I'm going to heal you and I'm going to use you to even bring prayer to even those around that situation and God says right now I anoint you and I free you daughter. I break off of you the spirit of depression. I break off of you the spirit of woundedness. God says that wounded spirit Spirit, even now is being healed for I am a healing a healer to the broken a healer to the wounded and today I decree and declare that God is giving you new oil of strength new oil of strength new oil of strength I release it over you now and I prophesy deliverance and healing Woo! Yeah, my mind. that's it praise him baby praise him Lift those hands, daughter. I don't have the privilege of knowing you. It's my first time meeting you. Your first time here? First time here? All right. Are you saved? You saved? Are you, you born again? Not saved? All right. Just wanted to ask, you know, because sometimes we think people saved or not saved. And, of course, that's our offering to you as well. Don't know if you have a desire to be saved or you just simply want prayer. And I'm certainly going to pray for you, but I also want to offer you Jesus Christ, who's the best thing that ever happened to any of us. And I believe that without doubt, the Lord knew that you would be here today. And whatever it is you're dealing with, that is the greatest offering that we can offer you, is that is Christ. And so I want to pray for you and, and, and just believe God. And if it is your desire to be saved, you can let us know after I pray for you. Is there something in particular that you need God to do? Just want prayer. Smart lady. Wise. Lift those hands. 
lift those hands. Father, I release the oil of God. I pray for this daughter. I decree and declare right now that you would touch her and that you would cause your hand to be upon her. I pray that you would allow your countenance to even rise upon her, her situation, her life. I decree and declare right now the blessing of God even now over her. I pray for her mind, her spirit, that, Father, you would reveal to her your goodness. For it's the goodness of the Lord that led us to repentance. And I thank you right now for you are a good God. And I release blessings and I pray that you meet her needs, that Father God, you would touch her, that you would touch everything that concerns her, everything that Father God even calls her to even be compelled to come to receive prayer. We touch and agree with you, daughter, and we decree and we declare that the Lord right now favors you, that the Lord right now, even now, look upon everything that concerns you the most in your life in the name of Jesus. And I even pray and prophesy that the Lord will even bless you, that you will see his goodness and see his mercy and see his kindness that he died for you on Calvary that you too might have that right to be saved. I pray now Father for her salvation. I pray that you would touch her and that you would bring her even now into the saving knowledge and give her a conviction that she might say what must I do to be saved. I lay my hands and I speak blessings over this daughter in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Welcome to Impact Church. Welcome to Impact Church. Listen, you got to come back to see us. You got to come back to see us. This is an awesome house. These are some good people. And I believe without doubt the Lord is going to bless you. And I believe the Lord is going to shine his light upon you. And that he's going to show himself strong in your life in the name of Jesus. God bless you. Bless you. Nice to meet you. Woo! Hallelujah. Somebody ought to give him praise. Hallelujah. Oh. Hallelujah. Father, we thank you. I'm just going to remove. There you go. Yeah. Father, I relay my hands and I release the anointing of God. I pray for your son and I pray for the man of God. I pray even now that you would release your blessing. I decree and declare that no weapon formed against him shall prosper. I break off of him all forms of depression, all forms of even, Father, things that have caused him hurt and things that may even be, God, damaging to his spirit. I decree and declare that you're blessing him right now. Favor him in everything that he puts his hands to. Let your blessing be upon it and cause it to prosper. I decree and declare that you bring him into his purpose and destiny through his identity. I release over him the anointing of God to come into his true self, his true identity through Jesus Christ. And I bless your son. In the name of Jesus, I lay my hands. I decree and declare no depression, that you're free in your mind, free in your spirit. In Jesus' name, we say amen. Somebody ought to give God praise. One more? All right. This is just like Lay's potato chips. They don't end. Oh, they're all over the place. Ain't nothing wrong with it. If we're going to be here all day, I'll be here praying for you all day. I love it. That's it. Just begin to continue to pray. Father, I thank you. I lay my hands upon my son, your son. I decree and declare right now the blessing of the Lord upon you. I prophesy that the Lord will even give you vision and clarity and understanding of your necks. Even the things that concern you in your spirit and things that cause you to even at times to be conflicted in your spirit about your future. I decree and declare that the Lord will even bring revelation and understanding and that he will give you peace in the direction that he shall lead you. I lay my hands upon you and I break off of you all forms of depression and all forms of even fear. I hear the Lord saying and he breaks off of you things that sometimes you hesitate because of a level of concern one way or the other. I break it off of you in the name of Jesus. I decree and declare that the Lord will give you great clarity and that the Lord will even bring you into a greater place of understanding. I keep hearing the word clarity, 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 clarity. I hear the Lord saying that I'm going to release and download vision to you that's going to give you the ability to know and understand his heart for you and not just your desire for him. God says, I'm going to reveal my heart to you and I'm going to show you my desire for you. Father is going to give you vision for your life that comes directly from him. I hear the Lord saying, fear not when you see this and when you hear this and do not fret because the Lord says, not only am I with you, but I will show myself strong through you. And the Lord says that it's going to demand that you come into a place of prayer and that you begin to position yourself and that you will begin to posture yourself to pray and hear me. God says I can speak even in passing and doing things but God says I'm bringing you even to a 
place where I want you to even give me more of you. More of you. I hear the Lord saying that there is much that you desire, but God says, I have even put some things on hold because of what I desire from you. Oh, God says that I'm even positioning you to even put yourself in a place to receive my heart. And God says, I will begin to reveal to you the mysteries of your future, the mysteries of your life even. I prophesy and I lay my hands that God will speak and release those things even as you posture yourself in prayer. And I bless you now in the name of Jesus. I bless the work of your hand. I bless even the work of your heart. God says you have a good heart. Your heart is of gold. And sometimes your heart has even caused you to give more than what you should have and do sometimes more than what you should do. But God says, I'm going to give you wisdom and even how to steward your heart. For your personality and your makeup is that as well. You will help anybody who you can and whom you can, and sometimes to your own detriment. But God says, I'm getting ready to give you focus and wisdom on how to steward even your heart. Sometimes we need to steward our heart. And God says, I release that upon you now, and I bless you, son, in the name of Jesus. And I decree and declare the favor of God in Jesus' name on your life. Love you with the love of God. Love of God. Love of God. One more. Oh, yeah. Say the best for last anyway. The best for last. Woo. You sit right there. You want to sit or stand? You want to sit? You sit. Because my anointing works either way. You'll sit. Okay. All right. Father, I thank you for mother. I lay my hands upon her. I decree and declare your blessing, blessings of healing, blessing of strength. I decree, decree and declare favor upon her life. I thank you, Father God, that even now you're blessing her and you're giving her peace in her body, her mind, and her spirit. I decree and declare that even now you're restoring her strength. I prophesy that the Lord is even now restoring even in your limbs and in your joints. I release the anointing of God to even now begin to permeate throughout your body that God will continue to miraculously give you and renew your strength and your health and your healing. I decree and declare that no weapon formed against you shall prosper. Your mind is strong. Your spirit is strong. And that the Lord is favoring you. I speak and release blessings. I hear the Lord saying that even now, angels are being released even over your home and even over things that concern you and even over your children and your grandchildren. God says that you are like a covering and you are like a covering even to your family. That he honors your prayers and that literally as you pray, He's blessing your children and blessing your family. And it's not about what they're doing or what they're doing right or wrong. It's about the fact that he loves you and that he honors your prayers. And God says, I have them in my hand and in my heart. God says, I'm releasing upon them those things that you have prayed and that you desire. And Mother, I release blessings over you and I decree God's favor. In the name of Jesus, you shall not lack nor want for anything. For the Lord shall not only provide for you, but the Lord shall give you an abundance because of your heart. You have a given spirit. You are a giver. And God says that even now I bless and I even prophesy that your harvest be reciprocated in an expedient manner. It is expedited now by the spirit and I command it to come forth even before the season. The Bible says there's a due season, but we command yours to come early in the name of Jesus. We decree and declare it blessings of healing, favor, no depression in your mind, no depression in your spirit and only God's goodness and grace in Jesus name somebody bless him Woo! somebody bless him bless him bless him Woo, Jesus y'all let me stay in here till 12 but it's good we praise God we speak blessings are we still alive we are still alive Wow, you held them on and they hung on. Thank y'all for hanging on. Praise God. I even speak blessings over those who are watching by way of Facebook Live. I decree and declare in your homes that the Lord will release his grace, his spirit. That the things that you may have need of and the things that you have a desire that you may not have been able and you obviously were not able to get to this altar. But today we send the altar to you and we send the Holy Ghost to you. We release blessings upon your home, your family. We decree and declare that there is no depression, there is no darkness in your life, your heart, your spirit. And we prophesy life in the name of Jesus. Somebody ought to just say life. Come on, I command life. Come on, somebody say life. I command life. Come on, clap your hands and bless him in Jesus' name. Woo! You 
all are so patient. Listen, we're getting ready to culminate our service by uh, bringing our tithe and our offering. Amen. We certainly praise God. We do not want to uh, leave without being a blessing to the work of the Lord and to the house of God. Certainly thank God for your patience. And, you know, when you're praying for people and when you're doing ministry, sometimes it just takes time. It takes time. And literally in my intent, you know, sometimes you, you say I'm going to pray and lay hands on people and keep it moving. But when the Holy Spirit does what he does and the gifts begin to move and operate, yemasokata, you just got to go with it. Mm, you got to go with it. Sister Janessa, I, I just hear the Lord saying that uh, it still stands. It still stands. Uh, uh, the Lord even wants you to, that, and, and we'll have a conversation about it, because I think that's probably more of what uh, spiritual uh, leadership fathers conversation. But there's such an anointing on your life. And there is such a prophetic gift on you. And God says, it's time. I, I just, it's time for you to come out of that place where you're comfortable with it. You're not, you ain't in pursuit of that. And for you, it says, I just want to do what, but God says, there is more that I have placed in you. And I know that you're recovering and I prophesy healing, but I hear in my spirit, to challenge you by the Spirit. And I felt led to prophesy. I just turned. It's like, boom. He's like, it's time for you to, there's a new level. There's a new level. There is something that's in, and it's not just, pro, it's something in your mouth. And I know that you may say, well, ah, you know, I don't, I'm not like my sister and them that have all this to get to talking to this. Now, you ain't have the, you don't have to have the gift to talk. You just need to open your mouth and let him talk. But there's an anointing over you. There's a, there, there's a word in you. There is a prophetic grace on your life. And God says that I'm getting ready to even challenge and bring you to a new level of even in your ministry and your ministry gifts and grace. Woo. And around everything that concerns you. That God says, and, and I see, and this is not to imply, but I, really, as we say, remember, we don't care. But I just hear the Lord saying there's a greater level of deliverance that's getting ready to come to your heart and your spirit. I don't, I don't know what that is. Maybe you know what that is. But God says, I'm getting ready to bring a greater level of deliverance. And the reason why I always believe deliverance is important because deliverance frees us to walk in greater levels of obedience. It doesn't always mean we smoke and reefer or doing that and the other. Uh, it just simply means that God is getting ready to deal with things that may be hindering you from the place that he's calling you to. But I hear the Lord saying that it's time for you to come into a greater place of, of just release, where he's about to release himself through you, release himself through you, and prepare yourself, because as you do this, I hear the Lord saying, as you begin to work with God, you watch what God begins to do. There are things that you desire, and God says, do not cut short your dreams. Make them big. Because you have something that I believe that God is going to use, and it's going to be a thing where God's going to bless you. I see wealth around you. I see wealth around you. I see that you will be the type of person that you will have multiple opportunities. It's like you will become a magnet of opportunities of a lifetime. Some people are like, I can't even get one of those opportunities, and they will come for you in so many different ways. I see you literally having opportunities to choose different types of jobs and cities and places and even the type of salary but I hear the Lord saying that those things are not just by virtue of your career and what you do professionally in your work and your business but they will be doors and they will be doors that's going to bring you into great connections and I see you connecting with people of wealth and people of great influence and I see you even becoming a great influence for even the women in your generation and there is going to be a, a a grace on you that's going to help young women even, I believe, come into that place where their whole concept will shift. And it's not because that you or any other woman does not want to be in a relationship with a man, but it will not be because they have need. You're getting ready to show women how to prosper and be great at being who you are and still get the love of your life, but not need them for the things that many women have basically needed them for. And God says, I'm going to make you an example to many. And God 
says because your heart is pure and because you have a very sincere heart that is honorable, God says I'm extending favor over you right now. I'm even causing your resume and your even your name to be released and you haven't even released things, even things that you haven't even put out yet. God says there are people who are going to see your name, but they're going to see my hand and they're going to see my hand upon you, saith the Lord. Somebody begin to give the Lord praise. There is a blessed woman right back there. Woo! A blessed woman. Blessed woman. A blessed woman. Yeah. Blessed wo wealthy woman. Honorable woman. Oh, y'all ain't saying nothing. Can I tell you what we need to accomplish? We can't do it on our own. We need favor. Can I tell you? I don't care how well you plan. I don't care how good you are. God's favor is what we need. And that's what I hear, Janessa, that there is going to be a strong grace of favor over your life. That there will be things that you're going to be able to do in places that you will go that you could not in any way possible get there on your own, but because of the favor of God. Woo! And I see you. I see you there. Somebody say, Lord, give me some of that. Yeah, I ain't trying to be in nobody's business, but God, give me some of that. The stuff that I need to do, I need favor. I need favor. I need favor. As you prepare your tithe and your offering, we thank you for your liberal giving. We thank you always for your liberal giving. And we ask that you would prepare yourselves. And for those of you who are watching by way of Facebook Live, I do believe they probably gave you something to see how we give. Yeah, these are the ways you can give. For those of you in person, you can also take a look at the screen and you can give online. You can text. You can cash out. Come on, jump to your feet. If you are giving by way of online or cash out, we ask that you would just come around and help us create the momentum and help us create even a culture of giving by just basically saying, yeah, I gave. I gave online, but I want to come and touch and agree and just wave your phone over the plate. Father, we thank you for the tithe. We thank you for the offering. We ask your blessings today upon the people of God. We decree and declare that the heavens are open. For the Bible says that you will open the window of heaven and you will pour us out blessings that there will not be room enough for us to receive. And today we thank you for that. We ask that you would bless the givers. We ask that you would even sanctify these gifts, Father, that we will continue to edify your work and do the things you've called us to do. In Jesus' name we do pray and let the church say amen. If you're happy and you know it, amen. We want you to let the ushers bring you out and you can give give and show your love amen to God through your seed hallelujah thank you for your liberal giving thank you for your liberal giving this is the day the Lord has made and we have made a decision not only to rejoice and be glad but also to give to give to give we also want to encourage you to continue to pray and ask God to give you a vision of of, of even sacrificing and giving bless you mother God bless you sacrifice amen and sow a seed into the ministry Whoa, it will not do well if I fall. Y'all will laugh at me. People do laugh in church. But we ask that you would sow a seed to the ministry. We are still believing God for great things. We have a lot of work to do, and we need your help doing it. We need your help doing it. We also want to invite you, if you're not a member and you do not have a church home, we invite you to be a part of this amazing church. Impact Church Goldsboro is doing some amazing things in the city of Goldsboro. And more than anything, somebody ought to be a witness and say, man, we're raising up some amazing people. Yes, God is doing some amazing things. Our vision is to build a people so that the people of God can impact and advance the kingdom of God. And so we certainly praise God for you, and if you don't have a church home, we invite you to become a part of this amazing church. Even those of you who are watching by way of Facebook Facebook Live, we have what we call Impact Church Global, and uh, we invite you to be a part of that as well. Listen, we do want to let you know by way of announcements that we will be in the Beyond the Veil uh, prophetic prayer and worship this week, and so we will be in prayer. We will basically have a whole week as we accustomed to do every first full week of each month, the first full week of each month. Some may have gotten confused. We were in here last week, and a young lady came, and she said, this is the week of prayer. I was like, no, 
that's next week. It's the full first full week. So that is next week or this week coming up. And so we invite you to come out. We just pray for one hour from 7 to 8 o'clock. We come in and we lift up our voice with prayer. We prophesy and we worship and we do the things that we do. And we certainly want you guys to be a part of that. Okay, my baby is coming. Okay, come on up. Then. Come on up. This is Papa Pretty Girl. And she probably like, look, I don't see grandma over there. My daddy's back there in a cage. Thank God it's a drum cage. And my papa's up here. And they love papa's lap. But certainly want to invite you to come out and be a part of Beyond the Veil. We also want to encourage you to register for this amazing uh, prophetic, apostolic prophetic gathering. Uh, Apostle Corey and these amazing gifts will be here, here at Impact Church Goldsboro. They're hosting here at Impact Church Goldsboro, Apostolic and Prophetic Architects, and we encourage you to come out and be empowered. Listen, God is doing something in the apostolic as well as in the prophetic, and I believe that it's going to require us to posture and position ourselves in a, in a, in a more profound way than just simply operating in these gifts and out of these gifts, we need to understand how to align ourselves properly uh, with God, with our leaders, with our church, with each other. And I believe that these particular uh, uh, men and women of God, I look at them, they are truly architects in their own right. And I believe that as I have basically had the privilege of sitting or listening to their vision and uh, hearing from them and hearing their heart, this is going to be something amazing. I want all of our prophetic people and people, period, in general, those of you here, let's uh, get in here because, you know, we always try to bring something and you don't have to recreate the wheel. The wheel came to us on this one. So praise God. I want you to get in it. It's going to be a blessing. And so we invite you to come out and be a part. All right. Nothing else. We are getting ready to go home and just do what we do. Some of you got pot roast in. How many you cook? Praise God. Brother Mike, uh, Sister Lisa, Elder Lisa, I'm going to have you do a class. Because <laughs> there's, there's not a Sunday that I ask that Brother Mike don't put over there at his wife. Like, look at he doing it happily too, boy. Look at <laughs> Ain't nothing wrong with it. Ain't nothing wrong with it. Me and rolling their eyes at their wife like. <laughs> uh, but, no, we want you guys to know that we appreciate you. Come on, stand to your feet. We certainly appreciate you presence, but we certainly hope and pray that you have an amazing evening, an amazing evening. Enjoy the remainder of your evening. Again, we invite you to come out in prayer. We also want to remind you that Thursday, Thursday is a night of prayer during the prophetic episode. Let me say the prophetic beyond the veil, prophetic prayer and worship. That night on Thursday, we will have senior night. That is where we're asking all of the grandparents and seniors and those of you who just simply want to come out and be in that environment, you don't have to be a grandparent only, but it is for those who are grandparents. We're going to be praying for our children, praying for our grandbabies. Amen. This is a little sweetheart here. She just care for you. She just care for you. She got a caring spirit. She want to make sure you're all right. Yes, sir. The Levites. The Levites will not meet this week because of prayer. So we are meeting in prayer. So all of the Levites, we ask that you meet us in prayer. Uh, in, in, in throughout this week. But senior night is Thursday night, and it was a blessing. Uh, how many of you was blessed by Mother Goldsby last month? Just her testimony and sharing and her wisdom and her very presence. And so certainly we are excited about that. So please come out and be a part. And with nothing else to keep us, listen, I apostolically release you from this place, never from the presence of God. We ask that you would just simply go and impact the world with what God has given to you. And remember to share the gospel of Jesus Christ. Do not just invite people to church, but invite them to Christ. And let them know that Jesus died for their sins. And let your light shine in this dark world. As you go, hug somebody, love somebody, share with our visitors. Let them know we appreciate them. Make sure you don't leave without saying hey or bye or just loving on somebody and just be blessed as you go in Jesus name.